Hi, I'm Jim W6LG, or YouTube Elmer. Welcome to my radio room here in Rockland, California. I've been out sick for about eight weeks, had to have emergency surgery, so that delayed bunches of things. And I'll cover that in another video. Um, the medical issues um, involve folks like me who get older and stuff gets misdiagnosed and it can be really serious. It, um, it can kill you. But I'll talk about that in another video. In the last video, I was, um, uh, let's see, I was doing this, the Zoom 2000 and towards the end of that video, uh, the pain got to be 10. I, I, I couldn't walk. So I was rushed to the emergency room um, right away in a car and had surgery uh, several days later. And I'll explain that subsequent. But uh, don't ignore things and don't take no for an answer. I'll let it go for, th for that. This video is about surgery. No, not surgery, surgery, but surgery on coax cables. And I did some surgery. Um, I measured maybe 20 different cables for loss. And I, whatever length they were, I adjusted them to 100 feet. I adjusted the loss to 100 feet. I compared it to um, the, the uh, uh, re reference cables. A KB5R, for example, has a site where you can plug in the kind of cable. It gives you the loss. So I use that and I use the uh, uh, specifications from some of the manufacturers. What I found was that if water got into the cable, it was crap, just terrible. It, it, it had no use at all. What does happen though, and what fools a lot of people is, as the cable deteriorates, what happens? The loss increases, of course it does. If the loss increases, what happens to the standing wave ratio? What happens to the SWR? So pulse goes out, comes back. As it comes back, as it goes out and it comes back, it's attenuated twice. So it's loss going out, loss going back. So what happens to the SWR? It goes down. The SWR is reading the forward power at the, at the, uh, at the meter and then the reflected. So it's got little diodes, it rectifies that and it displays it meter, digital. Uh, there are different ways to do it. But as the cable becomes lossy, the SWR looks better. And a guy can say, well, geez, I've got the whole 40 meter band with my dipole. You may, but it's not very efficient. Along those lines, um, we switch over to a PDF file and then we'll probably go live. This is um, an article in On The Air magazine about uh, from the ARL, which is our main resource for information. And um, there are some beautiful photographs uh, in, in the magazine. That's one of them. The front cover, I hate it, but because CW is everything, is a lot of things, but it's not blurry. Um, and you don't press the key the way the person's doing it. Uh, the other thing I noticed in this editorial uh, that I was surprised at, uh, let's see if I get my cursor to show up. Nah, it doesn't want to. The um, um, article mentions uh, in just above the picture that uh, I'll, I'll read through it really quickly. Some inspiration in the form of the top 10 reasons to try Morse code and more, including a sprinkling of meaningful dots and dashes throughout the issue just for fun. Um, CW is never, ever dots and dashes. For example, you wouldn't say uh, for ARRL, I guess it's going to be hard for me to do, dot, dash, dot, uh, AR, <laughs> sorry, dot, dash, dot, dash, dot, dash, I can't do it. And the reason why I can't do it is I was trained and I, everybody I know who operates CW, um, they would never say 
dots and dashes. That's being nitpicky, but here's why. Always, always, it is dits and daws. Dits and daws. Dits and daws. So, so that's the way it sounds, and that's the way your brain can recognize it. So if you learn it that way, uh, it's more apt to stick with you. So it is, uh, for ARRL, not going to do well, the way they have it, it's da-da. And that's the way it sounds. Da-da. A. Da-da it. Da-da it. Da-da it. it. R R L. So always, 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 never. Boy, if you say that to a CW operator, he's probably going to correct you. But the. Uh, and there's some beautiful pictures of uh, homemade keys of various kinds, and, and they're gorgeous. Uh, guys have done just an incredible job in building it. So here's the article that we're going to refer to. And um, in looking at it before I went um, live, I found a bunch of errors, th things that I would disagree with. For example, it says, if the SW, oh, let me go up a bit, uh, as, as the cable fails, you, you'll eventually notice the SWR, standing wave ratio, seems to be rising. Probably not. As it does, RF energy loss in your cable will increase. Well, if the losses increase, the SWR what? It goes down because reflective power goes down. It, it measures it going out right at the connector, but it measures reflective power. So that, that doesn't follow. And it goes on if the SWR gets above 1.5, and if it gets to be assured, it could damage your transceiver. Uh, it may, but that would be pretty difficult. It also says another thing I, I very much disagree with. Some types of coax cable connectors, such as B and C, have a certain amount of water resistance built into them. No, they do not. Some may, some don't. Here's what they recommend, um, and this is a good recommendation. Um, the self-amalgamating tape, there are various kinds of it. I use um, uh, stuff that you can get off of Amazon. It's, it's still pretty expensive. It runs anywhere from... 50 cents a foot to I think this is a dollar a foot and this Tamiflex is very good at, the, at doing it. They make reference in the article to uh, in that first paragraph it says uh, for this example and then down says we want to splice together using a so-called so-called coax barrel connector. That is not a coax barrel connector that is a bulkhead connector that's three or four inches long um, a, a, um, a a barrel coax connector Let's see if I get my cam one of my cameras to focus on this um, this is focus 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 there we go this is a barrel connector it looks a little bit like a barrel this is a particularly good one because it has uh, it's silver plated it's brass copper um, the uh, Brass insert is uh, plated, gold plated. So it's silver plated, gold plated, and the insulation is Teflon. It's um, probably a four dollar connector, but it's it's worth it. Now sometimes you can't get exactly um, a uh, silver plated connector, and so you may have to compromise a bit as I pick up the stuff I dropped to the floor. Um, but again, look for a nicely machined connector. If it doesn't just spin on, if it doesn't thread on easily, um, it, it, it's not it's not worth using. It's got some mistakes. It's probably um, uh, foreign made. So back to this article. The So there's a mistake here in that, and it's a small one. Oh, by the way, a barrel connector, the, um, if you will, the nomenclature for it is PL258. The connector I showed you is a PL258. You will need some sharp scissors. Do not use that brand of coax under any circumstance. It is garbage. And I've cut these open, and I can show you they're just terrible. Um... So don't use that. Um, 
This is self amalgamating. Start some distance from the connector and work your way around, which is what they're doing in here, and stretch it as you go, uh, pulling it as tight as you can get it. Now they recommend going over that with uh, Scotch brand tape number 33. The reason for that, they say, is that the uh, that the um, uh, Teflon tape will deteriorate over time due to UV. I have not had that happen, but um, it's probably not a bad idea. And I'm going to show you a little bit different way to do this in just a minute. Again, that's a bulkhead connector, not a barrel connector, and two PL259s on coax that I would never use. So that whole assembly, in, in my view, is a mistake. Um, and as I, I'm going to slide the picture over, and what I want to show is the beginning of that um, wrap of tape. And if that was on a tower leg and it was vertical, instead of laying down on a piece of um, uh, cloth or something or napkin, it, it would allow water to get inside. And that's not a good thing. Okay, I'm going to stop the video here. It's running a bit long. In the next one, I'll show you a really nice connector for Heliax. And also, I will demonstrate how I put two coax cables together and how I seal that connection, which is a bit different. Likely, you haven't seen anything like the way that I do it because I use alcohol, no locks, and I double nut the connection. And I'll explain that the next time. If you haven't subscribed, please, please do that. 73 for now. I'm Jim in Rockland, California. Thanks for watching.